Hey guys and welcome to the new video of Amazon Selling Partner API tutorials. After checking your emails and comments, it looks like many of you asked me to build a sample repricer. We build many reprices with a custom logic to our clients at Delta Logic. But in this video, I'll just show you how to change prices using Selling Partner API. I'll split this tutorial into two parts. First one will be using listings API with a patch request. And then in this next video, I'll actually show you how to use Fitz API to reprice your items even more effective using batch requests. So you don't have to worry about API limits, even if you sell hundreds or thousands of your ASINs at the same time. So first of all, uh, I know that many of you are using different custom reprices. You can even set up your own uh, repricer here in a seller central, or you can even reprice your items manually. So for example, this inactive listing right now is at the $3. I will change it to $3.05, save the price. And now you can see that this change is being processed and it may take actually up to 15 minutes to take the effect. And this is something that really hurts a lot of people because you cannot really predict when the listing will be repriced. But Amazon guarantees that up to 15 minutes it should be repriced. So now we can wait a moment till the item will be repriced. I can actually refresh it. As you see, it's still not reprice it, but of course in a few minutes it should be repriced. So let's move forward. So here we have a listings items API references. This is pretty much section called listings API. And as you see here, you can use this API to do different things. Operations are get listings item, put listings item, delete patch. And the one that we'll be using is patch listing item. So we'll be updating our listings prices. You can actually go here patch listings, as we've seen, we need a seller ID and we need SKU. And if we go back, we can actually retrieve a SKU from the product. So this is our SKU, I can copy it. But you may ask how to retrieve seller ID. And this is very tricky part. And I don't know the actual easy way of doing it. I know only the hacky way, but I will show you this. And if some of you knows how to retrieve the seller ID in an easier way, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, as we see here, we are selling this item we are here in a buy box and what i will do is i will simply actually we cannot do it with this item because we are it's inactive but let me go to one of our active listings so i'll go here i'll click on buy box and now in the buy box what i will do is i will search for my seller name as we hear bramante and c and now what i will do is here if you actually hover it you will see this small link here and in the small link here we can extract the seller ID here. It's um, actually in a query param. So we have a seller. We can actually click on it. And here we can extract this value. So this is our seller ID. And this is actually very important to do. Going back, we have our seller ID. We have our SKU. Let's close those. Oh, actually, we can see already that our item is um, repriced. So we put a new price. It took some time. It was actually fast. Now let's start coding our simple repricing using the API. First of all, I will import all of the necessary libraries for this that we'll be using. Most of them actually we don't need. I just copied them from our previous videos. So you can actually copy them or you can just use the one which we need. Now I also copied this from the previous video. This is very much just getting the credentials uh, from the JSON file and storing them um, as a uh, dictionary so we can actually successfully log into SP API and do a simple request. And just so you know, I did a comprehensive tutorial on this channel when I show you step by step on how to set up Amazon SP API credentials. We go to Seller Central, we, we create a sample private app, we go to AWS, create the roles, permissions, we connect those two and then we download credentials uh, to your PC and then we are actually uh, doing a sampler request using Postman. So I highly recommend you to check this video first if you haven't set up the SP API connection yet. Now let's get back to the video. So we have our credentials and now what we'll do is we'll be using Python library uh, as always. So this is the actual uh, library, Python SP API, just make sure to install this in your environment. And now let's get back to uh, listings API. So we will log into listings items. Uh, right now I'm using the account, which is on the Italian marketplace and we'll be using our credentials that I stored. So we are already successfully in a listings items API. Now what we need is we need the SKU and seller ID. So again, 
you can retrieve the seller ID as I showed you and the SKU. And the first request that we have to do is we have to get the listings item. All right, so those are information about our SKU. The most important thing from here is actually product type. And this is Eraser. We need the product type in order to successfully reprice our item. And now what we need to do is, actually this is optional because from here we could already reprice the item, but in order for us to understand how to do it, I will have to guide you through some very important topics. So let's go and use product type definitions API. This is the API that gives us all the information about the product. So we got the response. We'll need to use the actual product type that we have. This is eraser and we need to, we need to get the response. Now what we have to do is we have to go to schema and check this link. This is the link which actually gives us all of the information about this particular listing and all of the operations that we can do about it. So for example, in order to reprice this item, we have to go to this item. So our price, this is actually the property which gives us different properties. And we can actually have a property called schedule. This is the operation that we can do. So we have a schedule, then we have property called value with tax. And as we see here, this is the number and this is the actual price for the item. What we now need to understand is how to actually do this request, um, so the put request. And for this, actually, um, I checked the documentation. So we have the listings, we have a patch operations, and you need to understand how patch operation in a JSON format works. So basically there is a short tutorial on a JSON patch and if we scroll a little bit down, you will see a document structure. So for example, here we have the operation that is replace and we need to understand how this works with the particular path of this. And as far as I remember, I actually found some help with, uh, with a GitHub issues because uh, many people struggle to actually change the price there. So this guy, I mean, a few people actually showed the actual solution. So. We have two options. We can actually go here and, and and just copy it blindly, or we can actually understand it step by step by reading this paper and going through um, this schema because basically this op this operation is is based on that. So I know it actually looks very confusing, but unfortunately this is how the Amazon SP API works. Now based on this, I will show you how to prepare the patch body. All right. So this is our patch body. Um, as we see, we have the eraser cut product cut product type that we extracted. Later, of course, we can create a function with it and make it dynamic. For now, this is manual. Marketplace ID, this is the Italian marketplace. What you can do is actually you can extract this here if you are not sure. So we have this value here. As you see, this is the Italian marketplace. And now we can schedule the new price. Uh, let's check which price we have at the moment. So at the moment we have uh, $3.05. Oh, sorry, those are in euros. What I'll do is I'll put the new price. I'll put $3, three euros, sorry, uh, just like this. So this is our patch body. And now let's patch the item. So we need the listings item API again which we already have, I'll just make sure to put it again. And now there's the function called patch item, patch listings items. So we need the seller ID, we need the SKU, and we need the patch body, which we have here. And let's get our response. As you see here, we don't have any issues. We have accepted status with the submission ID, and now our item should be changed within the next 15 minutes. So let's wait for this. All right, it actually seems that I reprised the wrong item in uh, my listings, uh, but it's actually fine. I reprised the, the one that is active. So it worked, there's uh, three euros right now. Now I'll put it back as it was. Um, but yeah, basically you can reprice as many items as you want with this method. And in the next video, as I mentioned, I'll show you how to reprice your items using Fits API. And if you're looking for a complex help, feel free to basically reach out to us at Delta Logic. Uh, we are the Amazon verified partner and we can help you build your 
next SaaS or your next internal tool. We have 10 years of coding experience and worked with multiple clients on Amazon Selling Partner API for sellers, vendors, and Amazon Advertisement API. We have a team of 20 engineers that are waiting to help you. You can also take a look and check some of our testimonials. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please make sure to do so. I'm dropping those videos once a week. And if you have any suggestions for me for our next video topic, make sure to put it in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.